Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a super fun video which is just a nice regular knitting podcast. For some reason it feels like it has been a really long time since I've sat in front of the camera. I think it's also because I was doing two videos a week and then it kind of got a lot less very quickly and now it has been a while. So I'm really excited to just sit here today. I'm also sitting on the floor again which is how I used to do my videos. It just feels a little bit more chilled out. But yeah today is just a more chilled out video. So let's just get started. As you can see I'm wearing a finished object which is my Celeste sweater by Petit Knit. I'm so excited that I've managed to finish this one. If you have seen my last knitting podcast you would know that I had set a goal to knit four sleeves before my next knitting podcast which is this one and I've managed that goal almost. I've actually knit three sleeves instead of four. So two of those sleeves are for the Celeste sweater. This is knit in Drops Daisy yarn. I got the yarn as was required in a pattern and I think I made the size extra small. So Petit Knit also has a size extra extra small and I prefer to knit the size extra small. I think I fall more into that size range with a around 80 centimeter bust. So that's what I made. So despite getting the exact yardage that was needed for the pattern, I do have two balls of the DK Way Drops Daisy left over, which I thought was quite interesting. And I also have a lot of the colors left over. I'm just gonna get up a little bit and then you can see my sweater a bit better. I do have a microphone pinned on me, but it doesn't really matter. The only modification that I did to the pattern was that I did my collar in a contrasting color that is also in my color work yoke. So this is not the main color, it's slightly different as you can tell. So this is cream and this is beige. Just because I thought that would suit me and my skin a little bit better than having this directly next to my face. I don't know if it really necessarily makes a difference, but I thought it was fun and also like kind of the contrast that this is kind of a different section compared to the body, if that makes sense. I've seen some people in Ravelry do it in a high contrasting color. So for example, imagine this being like the bright pink or the bright red, which is also possible. I don't really love that option personally, but it is possible. And then the other modification that I made was the sleeves. So I did not do any decreases also because I think the sleeves are already quite narrow to my taste. If you've been here before, you know, I definitely love a nice puff sleeve or balloon sleeve, straight sleeve, anything that is basically big and roomy around my arm. I will show you this one. This is probably the least amount of ease that I've had around my arm in a sweater ever, I think. So it's only like this much and usually I would have probably like double. So instead of doing decreases like in the arm, I've just knit on straight and then rapidly decreased around the cuff. It's still very subtle just because there is not a lot of space here and then to go to the right size for the ribbing. I also think my ribbing is less because of that. I think I just divided it by half and then did that as my one by one ribbing. I think in the pattern the ribbing is looser so mine is more tight and then I just did a tubular bind off to make it nice and stretchy so it fits very comfortably. And I also did a tubular bind off on the hem which was absolutely a pain in the butt to knit and I'm still wearing my pyjama band so excuse me but this is my little tubular hem which looks very neat. I think a while ago I was definitely pretending to not be a fan of the one by one sewn bind off technique just because it takes a really long time to do. But now that I've done it more often, I do really think that that's what I prefer. And I think honestly, I was just fooling myself a little bit, pretending and making myself believe that I like the regular buy enough, even though this is so much better. Other than those modifications, I really didn't do anything differently from the pattern. I think the color work turned out very lovely. All of the yarns are Drops Daisy, except for the dark red color, which is Drops Lima. And then also the yellow color is Sana's Garn Smart. I will have all of the colorways linked below because I definitely do not remember. And then I have one more finished object, which is my Sweet Sierra sweater. I think I already showed this a little bit in my last video, but here it is finally finished. It is also currently in testing, which is really exciting. I also knit this one in Drops Daisy. It just uh, so happens to be the same yarn. And then I used a mohair on a cone, but the dimensions or the yardage per grams is really similar to other mohair. So on referee, I just said that it was drops kit silk, even though it was not, I don't think it really matters that much. It's just a regular mohair, I would say. So here you can see the sweater a bit better. It's an all over cabled and bobbled sweater with moss stitch, which I absolutely love doing moss stitch. I think I want to do more designs with moss stitch. And then the sleeves I did really in a fun way with a lot of decreases and a 
tight ribbing with a little frill ruffle, which is just super cute. And then the back, I believe I did with short rows. I honestly, I don't even remember how I did the back or was it differently? I'm not sure, but it does have shaping, of course. So it's just a nice drop shoulder, oversized sweater. Really like how this one turned out. It's very comfortable to wear. And I do have quite a bit of positive ease in this one. You definitely could make it with less positive ease, but I just feel like it makes it so cozy with the cables and then to have so much positive ease. For this one, I also did the tubular sewn bind off and I really love how it looks with one by one half twisted rib. I think that's my favorite ribbing to do. So yeah, I really love this sweater and I think that's all that I have to say about it. Then I have half a finished object. This is a test knit for Marie F, my tech editor. She is known as In Her Skein on YouTube and also on Instagram if you would like to give her a follow. I really fell in love with this sock pattern by her, so I was really excited when she picked me out to test it. And I have finished my first sock. I also cast on the other one, but I have not really touched it in a few days. But once I've made some progress on my other whips, I will finish the second sock and then I will finally be able to wear it. This is also my first time doing a sock with more stitches. I'm not the biggest sock knitter but in the past I've always done socks with 64 stitches which fit me very well. But when I measured my foot according to her size range I kind of came out to be a 68 stitches. So that is what this sock is. I would say it fits me well, but I think I'm also maybe a loose knitter, although sometimes I can be a very tight knitter, kind of depends maybe on the yarn. But I do think it looks very big just when I hold it up. The width is also much bigger here than it is here, which is very interesting because the stitch count is the same, so I'm not sure why that is. Then my color work is also a little bit tight because I did not size up for the needle because I didn't want to do magic loop. It's just a little bit difficult to get on my foot since I do have a high arch. But other than that, I would say they turned out really cute. Now I'm going to show you the yarn that I used. Here you can also see what I did for the second sock. This is knit in drop snort in a really nice light pink color. And then I paired that together with some leftover sock yarn. I think this is durable socks in a like caramel brown color. Pink and, pink and brown is probably my favorite color combination and I think it just turned out very cute. And there was one stitch that I actually missed, but then I just did a duplicate stitch for the first time with one of the yarn ends and it turned out absolutely fine. No notes, I would say. This is also my first time doing a slip stitch heel, which turned out really nice, I think. I'm not sure if other people used a different heel technique, but for some people the sock looked different, so I don't know why that is. I do really see how it really cinches in, like the size is very suddenly very small. You almost get a little bubble here, but I also have not blocked this yet, so I think it will turn out fine. And I do know that this will help it make more durable and last longer, which is a really good thing. I'm not really hard wearing on my hand knit socks because I just like to wear them at home, but I do have a pair of loafers for the spring, which I think would be really cute with some hand knit socks in them, and these especially are just really adorable. I think the pattern is going to be released mid-March, she said, so it should be out very soon. And then I would definitely recommend knitting a pair for yourself. So those are all of my finished objects and now we can get into all of my works in progress and don't be alarmed, there are a lot of them. I had two more works in progress that I frogged because it was just overwhelming me a little bit and I think it was the right call. So I'm just going to show you the one that has been on my needles the longest and that I've now refound. So this one I think I cast on about a month ago. It was supposed to be a Vivian Vintage Cardigan, which is a pattern of mine that is currently in testing. And I was going to make another version of it, but in a very different yarn and also with different stitch counts, which I think was a little bit of the flaw that I did because it's basically a whole different pattern because it would also look completely different in a fluffy yarn like this. This is Viking Garn Apakamaya, which is a really lovely yarn. But I think the weight of it doesn't really suit my design. So I've decided to pick it back up. And as I was knitting on it, I decided to just abandon that idea and go with a whole different thing. So now it's a design on its own. And it's probably going to be a blouse, but I have not really decided yet. It's currently at a stage where it can kind of become anything because it's not joined in the front yet, it's still open. And then other than that, it is quite the same because it has that you know, that puffy shoulder detail also on five millimeter needles. So I have two ideas that I'm thinking of. And if you prefer one over the other, please do let me know in the description. 
or not in the description, please let me know in the comments because your help yeah, will be really appreciated. So one of the ideas that I have is to make it into a blouse. So I would want to do this part open and then have a little bow here to close it like an I-cord bow. So only this will be open, then I will join in a round and then just knit in a round. And then I want to do flared sleeve that probably have a little bit of lace around the edge here. So that is one idea and it's more blousey, more like, for example, the Cumulus blouse by Petite Knit. You could also make this in a couple of strands of mohair, for example. But then my other idea is to proceed with the cardigan idea and then to do bows in the front. So it's going to be completely open and then have three bows in the front to close it. And then the sleeves are going to be the same. So flared sleeve with a lace edge. I'm not sure. Also, this is the first design that I've done that has mostly stockinette, which I think is really exciting. It makes it just a little bit more beginner friendly, even though the construction may be new to a lot of people. I do think it seems a little less daunting when it doesn't have, you know, so many different stitch patterns and things going on. So you don't really have to look at a lot of charge or anything like that. So in that sense, I really like this pattern. So let me know which of the two design IDs you prefer. And then, yeah, I, will, I think I will do what most people want because that uh, it, it matters to me. <laughs> then speaking of designs, I have one more design on my needles, which I think is a really good amount. I think two designs on the needles is perfect for me. So let me just show you. And after that, I will get back into patterns of other designers. So here we have one of my first summer designs of this year. And this is going to be called the Sage Scallop Fest. I think, I think that's going to be the name, but I, I'm not sure how well it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> but let me just show you. So this is what I have done so far. I've only done about, I don't know, it's not even 10 centimeters yet. So this is worked from the bottom up flat because this is going to be a vest that has ties on the side. I think it's a very transitional piece that you can wear over, for example, a long sleeve sweater or blouse. And then you can also put it over a summer dress if you just want to add a little bit of warmth. This I'm knitting in drops yarn naturally. So one of them is drops alpaca, which I kind of said to myself that I would never knit with this yarn again because I had a bad experience with it. But I saw Kriya Bea, her video about her favorite yarns and she mentioned drops alpaca and yeah, I think I was influenced. So I got some of it for this and then I'm holding it with drops alpaca silk, which just looks like this. And together they are basically almost the same color, I would say. And I really wanted to make it a little bit drapey and very fluffy, which this definitely is because of all the apoca fibers. I am planning to knit a second version of this design, which is going to have a little bit more stitch definition. And that's going to be in Drops Charisma in this beautiful dusty rose color, which is so cute. But that's coming up. So maybe this is going to have a video tutorial, maybe. I'm not a big fan of knitting things twice. So for some, or I would say all of my designs, I'm not really planning a video tutorial, but maybe this one will. I think this design specifically will just really benefit from a yarn that will show more stitch definition. So in the center, there is a nuske pattern, which is my first time. It's very cute. Then we have some seed stitch, some lace, and then here, it's also my first time doing one of those like hard stitch. And then we have a garter stitch edge. And then of course this really cute scalloped edge, which is why I decided to name it the Sage Scallop Vest. I could also name it like the Sage Scallop Slipover or something like that, but then the name just becomes really long. So I don't know, but this is what I have so far. And I think it's going to be really cute. I honestly have not found a lot of motivation to knit on it just because it has a lot of charge. So you really gotta sit down and pay attention to it, which is not really always how I'm feeling necessarily. Not too much progress, but a really exciting summary and transitional design. Then my next work in progress is another petite knit pattern. And I always say this, I'm not a big petite knit pattern person, but for some reason I'm starting to like them more and more, which I don't want to be a petite knit person, but yeah, it's kind of happening now. So I'm really sorry about that. So she has recently released the Esther jacket and it has definitely taken over my Instagram feed. I've just seen a lot of these and I really love the vintage inspired look of it. You know, I'm a sucker for seed stitch. I basically put it in a lot of my designs like moss stitch, seed stitch, which I think is very vintage looking. 
So I will show you what I have so far, but I'm making it in a really beautiful chocolatey brown yarn. So it's kind of difficult to see all the stitch patterns, I feel like, but I think it's looking very cute. So I've only done this so far, but this is just in a few days time, like three days that it has been on the needles. I'm knitting this one with two strands of fingering weight held together with a mohair. This is the Novita Merino 4 ply and it's really nice and really soft and I got it on sale. It was one of my birthday yarn purchases, which is really nice to finally juice it up. And then this is the Gazal Kit Mohair, which matches that color like exactly. And this was in my collection before that. And it's just a really nice match. Like, let me just show you. I think those colors go together really nice. And this is such a nice and hardy color. I think I really like it so far. I just am not in love with the knitting process of it. I feel like it's kind of in between where you still have to pay a lot of attention to the charge or the row that you're on, but then it's not engaging enough that I want to do that. For example, if you're knitting lace, you have to pay a lot of attention to the charge and the rows, but then eventually you will start to memorize it and then it's not so much. But here I am memorizing it, but then I still have to look at the charts quite a lot and I just don't love that but then I do really like the design and I think it looks really cute in this yarn specifically and I have some buttons that will look absolutely adorable with this design they are like floral and it will just look really cute and I think it will also be very wearable for me just with a dress in the spring and summer so for now I think I'm going to keep it on my needles even though I definitely thought about frogging it and turning it into something else but I think I just have to stick with it for now and yeah, I think I will wear it a lot and it's it's still quite an easy pattern. Like I don't want to scare anyone away from the pattern. It's just my personal experience that I would rather than have stockinette or something that is like like this, like cables, bubbles, then just give me everything. Like this is now a little bit in between. Do you know what I mean? Then I have two more works in progress to show you. I said in my last knitting podcast that I really want to do a blanket with leftovers. And I finally cast that on. So I am doing the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose, which I feel like is also everywhere at the moment. So sorry about it. This is what I have so far. And I absolutely love the colors that I picked out. I am struggling a little bit with this pattern. So let me just jump right into it. I basically knit the first square, this one. And I thought the size was looking very good. I really liked the yarn and the feel of it. So I sticked with the size that is recommended, which is a four millimeter needle. Then I made this square with the brown yarn. And as you can tell, this square, like the dimensions are very off. It's more of a rectangle rather than a square. If you put it on top of my first square, then it's just all messed up. And I'm pretty sure I followed the pattern correctly. Like I followed it to pattern. But here you can see that the brown one is much longer than my first one. So I'm not sure what happened there. And it's also wider and I feel like it kind of slants in a weird way. But I decided maybe it will block out or maybe I did make a mistake. I'm definitely not going to frog. I decided I'm just going to continue because I just want a nice scrappy blanket and it really doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get rid of some scrap yarn and have a fun like garter stitch project to knit on in the evenings, like after work and those things. So then I did my third square, which is this one. But as you can see, it's also looking a little bit, um, yeah, like a rectangle. So I'm not sure. Here you can see even better, I think, that the purple and the brown square are definitely larger than my first one. So now I'm thinking maybe my first one is just going to be smaller and then all of the other ones are going to be this size. I don't know. I'm going to stick with it and just see what happens because I do really like how it's looking and I've definitely really enjoyed the knitting process of it. I just talked about the Esther jacket and how it's kind of an in-between knit, like it's not mindless enough but then also not engaging enough. And then this one I feel like is exactly the right amount of mindless and engaging. So it's garter stitch, so you're only knitting, but then it does have a lot of shaping. So you're doing decreases, increases, also some short rows in there. And that really has me engaged. It sounds very complicated and difficult when I describe it. Like there are all of these techniques. But as you're working on it, it's really nice. And it really, yeah, it keeps you engaged. And it makes it a lot of fun. So just trust me on that. And it's really nice. I started this project also a while ago in a different yarn. And I couldn't even get through one square because I was just really bored with it. 
but you have to stick it out, you know? Make a few squares and then you will see that it's really fun to knit on. And I'm excited to have a blanket of this one day. So far I've knit about a square or half a square every day and I want to make the big version which is around 100 squares. So at that speed it's going to be still 200 days until I'm going to have a finished blanket. But I'm gonna not think about it, I'm just going to knit on it when I want to. I'm having a lot of fun with all of the colors, it's just a lot of fun to choose from the scrappy yarns that I have and then see which one is going to be next. Mine is going to be a mix of hand dyed yarn leftovers but then also regular dyed yarn. So this is for example some leftover sock yarn and then this one is leftover for my Sweet Sierra sweater so it's the Drops Daisy. And then this of course is a hand dyed yarn. This is Neighborhood Fiber Co in the color Butcher's Heel which I used in my pressed flower shawl. I don't knit with hand dyed yarn enough to be able to only use that in this blanket so that's why I'm doing it this way and I think I'm going to alternate it. So we have hand dyed plain hand dyed like that. Then I have one more work in progress. I feel like all of my knits so far have been quite engaging. Like for example the second sock I still need to do the color work. Then we have two textured garments. Then a design that I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. And I kind of just wanted something that was just plain pure stockinette. And yes I do still have a sweater that needs a sleeve in plain stockinette. But I'm hibernating it so we're not going to talk about it. But I just wanted something new and something like a dopamine knit. And that's exactly what my next whip is. So I had a design that I was not feeling and it was in Drops Air so I frocked it. And then I had been thinking about the cardigan number 8 by My Favorite Things Knitwear for a really long time. So I finally decided to cast it on and it was a spur of the moment decision. As you can tell because it's... I think this is really different from what I usually do. Maybe some people watching are like... Oh, that's so you but for me it's very different because I'm mulling three different yarns together and I'm not a huge fan of that look generally. I'm still not sure how I feel about it but I think when it's finished I will really enjoy it and I really like the big shoulder shaping detail that it has here and it's just really cute. So I'm knitting this in drops yarn which otherwise I would not really have a project for and then I'm holding it together with two mohair cones. So one of them is left over for my Sweet Sierra sweater, which is a little bit tricky because I don't know exactly how much yarn I used for that. I didn't weigh this cone beforehand, which was really stupid of me. And then I have this one, which is the bright pink cone that is always in the background of my videos. Finally putting it to use. I did not really imagine myself getting a merino, for example, to knit with this. So I think this is the perfect project. And I really like the purple in there. I definitely didn't want to do only the pink and the white. I think this makes it look a little bit more natural, like maybe it's meant to be this way. Then I'm just knitting it on the recommended needle size, which is a 5.5 millimeter needle, so it's going extremely fast. I cast this on last night and I've already done all of the increases and a bit. So it's going very fast and I absolutely love it. And I think this is going to be a really cute cardigan in the spring and summer. This is definitely feeling like a really nice transitional knit which is definitely what I'm moving towards. I think summer or spring seems a very far time away in the Netherlands. It's currently like still under 10 degrees and it's just been gloomy, not very sunny, still very much cold. So these kinds of knits are really perfect. Also my Celeste sweater just with lots of color and dopamine. I'm calling it my dopamine cardigan because it's just exactly hitting the right spot at the moment. And I'm also just really loving the plain stuck in it. I don't know. I thought I had enough plain stockinette but then I'm really enjoying this so and this is a drops air it's in the I believe it's like the wheat color so it's not exactly white so those are all of my works in progress then usually I would show my yarn acquisitions or purchases at this moment but then I actually saw a video recently where someone said that they don't really like showing acquisitions and I kind of agree with that it doesn't really have a purpose because I'm just showing yarn that I bought and then it's just ending up in my stash and then Sometimes it can be a very long time before you see it again or I will sell it. So. so instead of showing you my yarn acquisitions or purchases, I'm just going to show you some of the near plans that I have in the future. So one of my first plans is to knit the Pride and Pearls cardigan by Kotova Kika. I have a lot of cardigans already on my needles. I have two or maybe three. But then after some of those are finished, this is going to be next. And I'm going to knit it in this Drops Lima 
I think this color is really wearable for me in the spring summer and I also just think it's going to be a very fun knitting process with the bobbles, the cables, everything that's going on and I really like the belt that it has. I just really love this design since the moment she like even shared like a little bit of the design and I'm finally going to yeah, knit it hopefully in a month or so. Then I've also started a new job which is really exciting. I'm currently working in a fabric store two days a week and I think it has been one of the most fun jobs that I've had maybe ever. I just love being around the fabrics all day. It's definitely a little bit exhausting like physically at, the, at, at times because the fabrics can be really heavy and then you're cutting a lot of fabrics and you have to pull them out of the shelves. So it's quite physically demanding at times. Definitely after work I'm pretty exhausted and don't have a lot of energy to knit which is why the blanket has been one of the really nice things to have on my needles. But working at a fabric store also has its advantages. Of course, looking at all of the beautiful fabrics every day and having really nice conversations with the customers. And then also having a little bit of a discount on the fabrics, which is definitely not good for me. So I think from here on out, this knitting podcast is going to be more of a making podcast because I think my sewing mojo is finally back after losing it due to my business and basically sewing too much. Getting to the point, I got some fabric and I'm going to make a really nice skirt with this. This is a visco satin yarn with some zebra print stripes in a really nice like dusty pink or purple color and I really I think I'm going to use the Vicky Sews Seti skirt I believe is how it's called. It's a really basic bias cut skirt with an elastic waist and I think it's going to be perfect in this fabric and I would really like to wear this with just some sneakers and a sweater on top in the spring and summer and I really like this color. My next video I'm definitely going to be talking about all of my spring and summer knitting and sewing plans and I'm definitely going to get a few more fabrics from the fabric store to make those plans alive basically and I'm very excited to show you those. And then I have one more thing that I want to get into or I want to do. We recently got these new pillows for the sofa and they are quite an odd shape. They are like this. It's definitely difficult to show you, but they're a rectangle, which you don't really see very often in pillowcases. I could just get a basic pillowcase from Ikea, but that doesn't really excite me. I always want things to look nice and fun. And then when I see them again, I just get excited by them, by the way that they look. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm definitely not necessarily a materialistic person, but for example, just drinking my tea out of a really cute mug every night just makes me happy. I don't know if other people are the same, but I just want this pillow to be really fun and really cute. So every time I lay my head on it, I just, you know, get a little rush of emotions and excitement. So that's my intention for this pillow. I definitely have looked on Ravelry, but a lot of the pillow cases or pillow patterns are for regular square pillows. So now it's up to me to decide if I want to do a knitted pillow, a crochet pillow or a sewn pillow. Sewing is definitely the one that is most in my comfort zone, especially for a size like this. Sewing a pillow would be really easy. I think if I were to sew a pillow, I would want to do one with a little ruffle edge, which I think is really cute. But then I've also thought about doing a granny square crochet pillow and then sewing a backing on it and then still doing the ruffle edge. I think that's a really cute option and probably the one that I'm leaning towards the most. And a knitted pillow could also be a lot of fun. But I just feel like I have too many other knits and things in progress that I don't think the pillow is going to happen anytime soon if I choose to go that route. So those were all of my finished objects, works in progress, plans that I have for the near future, hopefully. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. It has been a while since I did a sit down video, so it was really fun for me. I look forward to doing the spring video and just also sitting down and taking the time for myself to think what I really want to wear this spring. It's very important to be intentional and really think, am I actually going to wear that? Because we are creating garments with knitting. I am definitely more of a progress knitter sometimes than a product knitter. So sometimes I can kind of forget that and then I just want to knit because I love the action of knitting. So it's really nice to, you know, put your mind to it and think what you actually want to make. So I hope to see you in my next video for now. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I wish you all a very happy day. Happy knitting and bye-bye.